let's travel east to magnificent Kolkata and meet Ram, a small-scale bangle maker. Ram gets his water supply from the natural stream of water running adjacent to his village. After using the buckets of colored water containing heavy metals such as cadmium, zinc, and nickel, he, without any treatment, simply disposes of this water into a sand pit dug in his backyard. Others who can't even manage that pour the polluted water back into the same river from where they first collected it. Like Ram, there are more than three million small-scale entities across India that contribute to up to 40% of the heavy metals present in our polluted rivers. That's because these people that form the bedrock of India's economy have no access to any kind of water treatment facility. I met Ram in 2017 as part of an interdisciplinary team of researchers that included a biologist, a biochemical engineer, and an architect. We wanted to delve deep into better understanding the root causes of water pollution, especially in small-scale communities. We visited small-scale bangle makers in Kolkata and even textile dyers in Panipat, the textile capital of India. It was devastating to see the impact on their living conditions due to waterborne diseases, which could have easily been prevented. So instead, we took on a challenge to empower Ram and his fellow panchayat communities to clean the polluted water by themselves, using the resources and techniques that are readily available to them, while still managing to introduce futuristic techniques of wastewater treatment a system that performs naturally, transitioning Ram's linear process into one of a circular economy. My colleague, Dr. Brenda Parker, had already been researching the potentials of using a living organism, a microalgae, to clean polluted water. Yes, microalgae. That green patch you often see floating over ponds and lakes. Microalgae grows by absorbing carbon dioxide and sunlight, performing photosynthesis. It produces a set of compounds that allows it to capture heavy metals, such as cadmium, zinc, and nickel. Heavy metals that are present in life-threatening concentrations in more than 170 rivers across India. They would grow this algae in massive liquid containers, systems that are expensive and require large amounts of space and energy, neither of which Ram has. So instead, our team worked to formulate a material, a material that could replace these liquid containers. We developed a seaweed-based gel that allows the microalgae to grow, becoming greener with time. Seaweed itself has a form of microalgae, Therefore, this material has its own filtration properties. But how can we introduce this material within Ram's bangle-making process, especially with the limited resources Ram has? We designed tiles that are lined with deep channels to hold this microalgae-containing material. Inspired by the different veins on a leaf that have evolved to uniformly distribute water, it also performs a completely biological process. These tiles can be assembled into a wall as big or as small, depending on the space available, where it collectively treats water for a small panchayat community or is exclusive to Ram's coloring unit. As an architect, I strongly believe that if we are to tackle wicked problems such as water pollution, we need to rethink the functions our buildings and our cities can perform. For instance, a wall that performs photosynthesis and cleans polluted water, a wall we call Indus.
These styles can be easily be made by Ram himself using locally available materials and traditional techniques such as clay and laterite. Using a mold which was digitally designed and fabricated in our studios at UCL, the user is required to simply pour the polluted water into the inlets present at the top of the wall. The water then enters the system, running onto the branch channels, allowing the microalgae to absorb the heavy metals present in the polluted water. The water can be recirculated for further treatment, depending on the level of contamination, leaving behind a bucket of cleaner water which Ram could reuse or safely dispose. Now, just the way we all have preferred cuisines, different species of microalgae like to eat different types of heavy metals. This allows us to tailor-make indus specific to the manufacturing process and the contaminants identified in our polluted waters. Our lab tests have shown microalgae to reduce the concentration of cadmium by 10 folds within 30 to 45 minutes, water which is fit to be reused by Ram. But the story doesn't just end here. What happens to the heavy metals now trapped in this material? The algae either breaks down the pollutants into a completely harmless state, or they can be extracted from the gel and brought back into the system, create other valuable products, closing the loop. This microalgae-containing material will also need to be replenished from time to time, just like the cartridges in our water filters. Therefore, through community engagement workshops, we can educate Ram, his wife, and even his children with the techniques of preparing and maintaining their own algae gel solution, creating new forms of employment opportunities. The construction of Indus will also create an interdependent network between the local tile artisan and the biomaterial supplier, allowing them to maintain Indus locally, creating a truly circular economy. This trustful collaboration between all of us, including governments, NGOs, public and private organizations, is fundamental in unleashing the true potentials of the circular loop. Let us not just learn from nature, but work collaboratively with it by designing systems that allow us to act locally and impact globally. Thank you.